Hey Tekken players, as always, I hope everyone is doing well. So today's video is going to be a quick one and it's all about getting more reliable execution with King while playing on a pad. This video was from a suggestion from one of my subscribers via the comment section on a previous video and after doing a bit of digging I realised that there really aren't many pad tutorials with a hand cam specifically for King players. Shout out to T King who is a super strong King player from Pakistan who has made a couple which I'll leave a link to via the card and the link in the description. So I'll go through some key techniques you need to learn when playing King on a pad, starting from easy and moving up to the more technical. Please note that this is not a tutorial video on how to actually do these moves, but more kind of hints and tips and demos on things to look out for if you're getting them wrong. This is a King specific video, but obviously there's a lot of crossover with Armour King as well. All of these are great drills that I like to do when warming up getting ready for a good online King session. Finally, just to stress, I'm no BP, Jess Andy or J King when it comes to King execution. But everything I suggest has helped me out and it's got me to the point where I feel confident enough to at least explain to other people how to make your king execution a bit more reliable. Okay, so with that intro done, grab your pad and let's begin. So before we start, I'll just share my pad bindings with you. The key point here is I have 2 plus 4 bound to the R1 button. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do when Tekken 8 is released, as R1 is a default heat burst button, but I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Okay, so this is you. Don't lie, I know this is you. And if it isn't you, you're not a real king player. The reason why I know you do this is even the best king players in the world get this misinput when they're trying to land a full crouch down 4 2 and end up getting a down 2. So let's look at how we can stop getting this accidental down 2 and get the full on meaty down 4 2. So there's two reasons why you might be getting this misinput. The first is that you are literally just hitting down two, and so you'll get a generic down jab. The second and more likely scenario is that you're probably rushing the move and so you're not in the full crouch state. So the method I use to make sure I'm holding down back and not just down, then I slide my thumb almost like a quarter circle but from down back to down forward and then press two when I feel my thumb has slid all the way to the front. This might potentially add a few hundredths of a second onto the execution time. But I think you'll find it's more reliable in the long run. To practice this, first just do the method by itself, so hold down back then slide forward to down forward. When you have this down, set the time to do a low sweep and make sure you can punish it reliably without getting it down too. Ten frames fast, one break despite looking like a one plus two, and seventy plus damage with a wall. If you play king, you have to spam giant swing. But it's definitely one of the more technical throw inputs in the game, and so you can often get the following errors such as down jab, while standing one, jab, or pile driver. These errors will usually occur if you hit the forward one too early, or if you've missed the back input on the forward half circle input. In order to avoid these miss inputs, first make sure you slow down and my personal tip really is to emphasize the back before doing the rest of the half circle. Start slowly and overemphasize the movement. Then begin to speed up gradually and it will eventually become cleaner with practice. Tombstone has this input which is down back forward 2 plus 4. However, a lot of people, including myself, prefer to use this alternative which is quarter circle back then forward 2 plus 4. So practice both and go with what you feel is more comfortable. And that would be my suggestion anyway. Okay, so if you're not aware, the vast majority of King's grabs can be buffered from other moves. What this means is that you can enter the command for the throw while the animation from the previous move is still happening, as long as you time the final part to come out when the previous move is finished. This is a key method to practice because it means your throws come out as soon as possible which gives your opponent less time to duck, sidestep or beat the throw with another move. However, the key thing to practice here is knowing when the move that you're buffering has recovered. And some moves have a much longer recovery time and so you need to work on this timing. So let's look at a really good real world example with King's Back 1-2. Back 1-2 is King's 12 frame punisher that offers good damage and frame advantage on hit. So it's a great chance to buffer a throw. However, if you look at the recovery animation, you'll notice that King takes a long time to recover while he keeps his arm up in the air. So it's a great chance to buffer a throw, but be sure to delay the end of the throw a fair bit more than you think. It's also a similar story to down back three, which is a classic giant swing setup. 
So just to reiterate, you can buffer the throws with these setups, but you just have to make sure you time the end to come out when the previous move has recovered. So practice buffering throws from the following common jabs, pokes and punishes. I've already made a video tutorial on this, so I won't go into too much detail here, but the key to landing it reliably is to buffer the first forward just as the two jab recovers and then hit the next forward and one exactly the same time. So when you practice this 1-2 jab into forward forward 1, it should look like this. In that video, I stress that it's all about being accurate and not just being quick. Now, I've had some people tell me I'm wrong that to land this you have to land the forward and the one together on the exact same frame, but rather than argue the toss about the difference between a 60th of a second, all I can say is when I feel like the forward and the one land together, i.e. pressing it at exactly the same time, then this just works, and this is how I got to landing this combo reliably after literally years of being unable to. So with all due respect, but I will explain what works for me. Okay, finally, let's look at Instant Shining Wizard, or ISW. I have made a tutorial on this and other instant while running moves which I'll post links to, but in short, the command is either forward neutral forward forward 2 plus 4, or you can do forward forward neutral forward 2 plus 4. With this method again, it's more about being accurate rather than being quick. And more often than not, for me, it's knowing that I've hit the 2 plus 4 and the forward together. Similar to the forward forward 1 combo we've already mentioned, and this is probably where you're going wrong if you don't get the correct animation. So, a bit like throw buffering, there's different drills here to practice getting your ISW to be quicker based on the recovery frames. The most straightforward is probably just doing this as close as possible, then doing it again while the dummy stands up. Next, I'd practice after landing a hop kick into ISW, as this gives a fair bit of leniency to put in the input. And now, for when your ISW has to be super quick, Hop kick to forward 4 is really strict timing, so practice this. To give an honourable mention to Armour King, he has some combos that require a sidestep, then a very quick ISW, specifically after counter hit down forward 2 and crouch dash 1 at tip range. Shout out to Armour King's YouTube channel, by the way, that's Armour King the YouTuber, not Armour King the character, who uploaded a great ISW guide recently for. Armor King, who suggested Armor King's while standing 1 to ISW is one of the strictest in terms of timing, so that's another great one to practice. So in summary, these are the drills I would recommend practicing for pad players. Practice your full crouch down for 2 as block punishments. Practice raw giant swing. Practice various throw buffers. Practice buffering and landing the 1 2 into forward forward 1 for combo training. Practice the various ISW drills. Well, I hope that helps you all. As I mentioned, I made this video based on a comment someone left, so feel free to drop any other suggestions for things you may want to see. I have a couple of upcoming videos in the pipeline, including a scrubs guide to sidestepping and walking, and how to learn a new character. So be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. Thanks guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.